Sinn Féin, like the truly progressive and tolerant party that they are, will be protesting outside a Catholic church for failing to fly a gay pride flag on its grounds. Accept the LGBT agenda into your religion, they demand, or else. This is Ben Scallon and you're watching Gripped Media. You know, I thought that protesting outside Catholic places of worship was a hardline loyalist thing, but apparently Sinn Féin thought it looked fun and wanted to get in on the act themselves. Speaking on Twitter earlier this week, Sinn Féin's Dublin City Council leader, Dohi Doolan, said the following, Ballyfermot is proud, supporting our LGBT friends and family. Friday, 6.30pm, Ballyfermot Roundabout, organised by Ballyfermot Anti-Racist Network. Now, I know what you're thinking. Ben, you say, that doesn't say anything about a Catholic church. That says to meet at the local roundabout. But that's because of a little thing called moral cowardice. It just so happens that the roundabout they picked is right in front of the Catholic Church. So not only are they picketing a place of solemn worship and prayer, they didn't even have the honesty to be upfront or transparent about it, presumably because they know it looks bad. After all, the last people to engage in this kind of outrageous carry-on were loyalists in the 1990s. It's not really a good look for a party trying to portray themselves as a great defender of Catholics. So why exactly are Sinn Féin holding a protest outside a Catholic church? What's going on here? Well, to make a long story short, the local parish priest last week took it upon himself to fly the gay pride rainbow flag on the grounds of Our Lady of the Assumption Church a move which many local parishioners and Catholics strongly objected to because they said that what that flag stood for went against their faith. As a result, the Archdiocese requested that the flag be taken down by the parish which it was. Note here that they didn't order it to be taken down, they requested it. And by the way, whatever the flag was, there was always a high chance that it would be taken down because it's the protocol of Catholic churches in the Dublin Diocese that they can only fly the papal flag and the national flag of Ireland. That's it. You're not allowed to fly the flag of Manchester United. You're not allowed to fly the flag of your favorite political party. You're not allowed to fly the pirate flag or the UN flag or the flag of NASA. All of that would be in breach of the rules. But this one is only controversial because it was the LGBTQ plus one, which is considered a sacred cow in our society. Now, maybe you have no problem with the LGBT social or political movement and gay pride. Maybe to you it's no big deal. And nobody is asking you to change your mind on that. You can believe whatever you want, it's a free country and that's absolutely your right. But the Catholic faith, like all faiths, has certain rules and teachings whether you personally agree with them or not. And one of those teachings is to love gay people, but not to promote LGBT lifestyles. I know that people hate the concept of objectivity these days, but words have definitions. If you say that you're a vegan, but you tuck into a steak every night, you're not really adhering to that label. If you say that you're teetotal, but you chug whiskey like it's going out of fashion, are you really teetotal? And if you say you're a Catholic or any other religion, but then you disregard that religion's teachings, are you really practicing that faith? You know, in the Catholic Catechism, it even says, people do not choose their homosexual condition. They must be accepted with respect, compassion, and sensitivity. Every sign of unjust discrimination in their regard should be avoided. These persons are called to fulfill God's will in their lives, and if they are Christians, to unite to the sacrifice of the Lord's cross the difficulties they may encounter from their condition. In other words, the official position of the church is that gay people must be accepted with respect, compassion, and sensitivity, but that the church doesn't approve of gay acts. That's it in the catechism. That's the teaching. Now, I'm not here to argue whether that's right or wrong. You can love that teaching, you can hate that teaching, but that's what it says. You know, if you want to be a Jew, there are certain rules. You have to abstain from eating pork. You have to be circumcised. You have to believe certain things about the Messiah. These are the rules of that religion. If you want to be a Muslim, you have to abstain from drinking alcohol. You have to pray five times a day. You have to believe Muhammad is a prophet and that men can have multiple wives. Now, maybe you think, but I don't like those rules. I love pork and alcohol. Okay, and nobody is forcing you to go to your local synagogue or mosque. Nor is anyone forcing you to go to church if you don't agree with the teachings. That's what the religion says, and if you don't like it, feel free to sleep in on a Sunday. It's really not complicated. Leave people to believe whatever they want within the confines of their own church. 
That's called tolerance. So why do groups like Sinn Féin want to force people using intimidation and rallies on their doorstep into believing what they believe? Almost 40% of the population voted against gay marriage in 2015. That is not small by any means. That sizable minority are entitled to their opinion just as much as those who voted for gay marriage. For some reason, the Yes campaign won the referendum and the hardline campaigners still aren't happy. This small but powerful sect of militant so-called liberals have to stamp out any remaining pockets of resistance or people who aren't 100% sold on this issue. They have to bully and harass the minority until they enthusiastically accept and celebrate the new normal and fly this flag over every building and institution. You must obey and conform or else. You know, leftists like those in Sinn Féin like to crow about separation of church and state quite a bit. Mary Lou even said, I believe in the separation of church and state, and I believe that the law has to serve and accommodate everybody and protect everybody, so I don't want Catholic laws. And I agree with that, I don't want to live in a theocracy either. But then how come if the church and the state are to be separate, we have politicians from Mary Lou's own party bullying the church into compliance? They'll oppose church influence on society, but will protest outside a church for not adhering to their social values. The policy seems to be that the church can't influence me, but I can intimidate and coerce them. They don't want separation, they want domination. They want to bring institutions like the church to heal and drag them kicking and screaming into the modern Ireland of gay pride, unlimited abortions and transgender sex changes for teenagers, whether you want it or not. The same goes for lockdown. A church run hospital has a crucifix on the wall and the hardline left wing campaigners will have a demented screaming panic attack at how society should be secular, stop trying to impose your religion on me, take it down. But then they'll cheer churches being forcibly closed down with the power of the state. It's not about equality or separation. They clearly just have a very thinly veiled disdain for Christians and their deeply held beliefs. Believe it or not, most religions wouldn't fly a gay pride flag outside their church or temple. Muslims wouldn't do it. A Jewish rabbi wouldn't do it. Hindus wouldn't do it. But going after any of those might get you called a racist or bigoted or something by the liberal cancel culture lynch mob, so it's only Christians who are used as the convenient punching bag of the media and the political classes to be singled out specifically for this issue. I mean, we're here talking about how the Catholic Church is homophobic, and meanwhile Simon Coveney is hanging out with Saudi Arabian officials in the Middle East. This is the same Saudi Arabia where homosexuality is literally a crime punishable by death. They're so opposed to homosexuality there that last year one blogger was given 10 months in jail, a fine of almost $3,000 and was then deported from the country just for expressing support for LGBT rights online. But do we have protests outside the Saudi embassy when Coveney goes to meet with them? Do we have pages and pages of newspaper headlines about how other religions have a homophobia problem? Well, what do you think? Of course, it's only Catholics and other denominations who are in the crosshairs, as always. Because it's not about homophobia. It's about bullying Christians and pushing a particular social agenda on them. To be honest, I don't know why Sinn Féin even care what Catholics believe anyway, since many of their most influential members are not even religious themselves by their own admission. Would you be religious? In terms of religion, as we understand it, religious institutions, no, they've, they've run their day, they've had their... They've had their chance. They even have members who disparage the Catholic faith, like Senator Fintan Warfield making a mockery of Pope John Paul II by taking lewd photos with a t-shirt of him. Their youth wing shares photos promoting the militant atheistic Soviet Union, which burned churches and slaughtered Christian clergy, as well as millions of men, women, and children of faith. From this to pushing abortion on devout people of faith who don't want it, and now rallying outside churches to further their own political agenda, this crowd really have sung to new lows. One wonder if they'll be campaigning outside churches for the by-election or do they have an ounce of shame. Please like and share this video and if you enjoyed it please consider signing up for a monthly donation via the link on screen to help us produce more content like this. Alternative media like Gripped needs all the assistance it can get and every donation goes a long way. As always, thanks for watching.